Hello everybody, uh, I'm back here today doing another little video here. Uh, I wanted to talk about the difference between, you know, uh, conscientious and ethical prosecutors uh, as opposed to less than ethical or, um, you know, proper prosecutors. So that's what this is about today. This, uh, the things I'm going to put here for you today are from a YouTube video featuring uh, Steve Drazen and Laura Nyrider, um, but also featuring the person I'm going to show you, the prosecutor, Robert Milan. I think this guy is absolutely stellar. I just think this guy is great. He is a prosecutor who seriously, seriously disdains chasing prosecutions for their own sake. And that he... And he thinks that if the prosecution got it wrong, then they need to be the biggest one out. They need to be the first one out there, and they need to be the, the most proactive one trying to make it right. And, and I think he's right. And he has actually taken a lot of steps to do just that. And I just think he's absolutely stellar. And as far as Brad Schimmel goes, you know, Brad Schimmel should really, really take a look at this guy and, um, you know, maybe take a page out of his book because like I said, this guy is a class act and I'm wait till you hear the things he's got to say right now. And I, I think really seriously, Brad Schimmel and, and his, and his little buddy, Ken, the prize Kratz could really learn a lot from this guy. Anyways, I'm gonna play those clips for you now. Here they come. So one of the, trends that's happening across the country now are these conviction integrity units that you're finding in prosecutor offices. So independent uh, units that are dedicated to reviewing uh, allegations of cases of wrongful convictions. Uh, does this suggest that prosecutors have a proactive role in addressing wrongful convictions? All right, Mr. Miller. Uh, you know, if you Prosecutors, are the, let me just back up. You know, when it comes to taking somebody's freedom, and this is what every prosecutor should think about, when you take somebody's freedom, it's not like horseshoes. It's close doesn't cut it. You better get it right. And when a prosecutor's office locks somebody up, uh, they better use the same sense of urgency to fix it if they've locked up the wrong person. And that's why these conviction integrity units or DNA review units, whatever you want to call them, are so important. Um, every uh, major prosecutor's office in this country should, should have that unit that goes back and looks at these cases. Um, we started it in Cook County back in the early 2000s. We copied it off of San Diego. San Diego actually had, had that unit, and then we opened it up, and, and we were very successful. We actually, actually exonerated a number of people over those years. Um, but there's another important component of this, and Wisconsin should really start to get it. And that is, when you're a prosecutor and a potential wrongful conviction is brought to you, the adversarial system should end. I mean, one of the biggest problems about this is you go into court and you're battling. And it's, it's all adversarial. But when you are brought a potential wrongful conviction, that has to end. And the, the prosecutors should work with the defense attorneys to find the truth. Forget about win or lose. Let's just get it right. And what, that's not what you're seeing in this case. The fact that Steve and Laura and Tom have brought this to the appellate court and you know, to post convictions, the appellate court, with zero success in light of what we just watched. And now they're in the federal court, and I bet Tom today is going to win the Dassey case. And, and uh, I hope I win that bet, and I'm convinced I'm going to win that bet. But Brennan Dassey will walk. He'll get out because he has really good lawyers and because the truth is going to come out. This is just too embarrassing. Um, but I... <laughs> but I, I hope that uh, Wisconsin wakes up and they get, in, in regards to wrongful convictions, uh, the adversarial stuff ends and they work shoulder to shoulder with the defense bar. Now, we're looking at the definition of Kratzy here, <laughs> which is the obvi obviously the opposite of the way uh, that uh, Robert Milan operates. But I'm going to go ahead and play a couple more clips of Robert Milan here that I have shared before. 
but they're just I mean this guy is so on point I just this guy is absolutely great I totally admire this guy so I'm gonna play those for you now Mr. Marley uh, from the prosecutor's perspective does the lack of corroboration in Brendan's confession in the form of evidence or otherwise give you pause or concern yeah, from a prosecutor's perspective, you know, Dr. Kavanaugh and, and, and Laura and others can talk about, you know, the, the child's psychological issues and, and the demeanor, as Laura pointed out, and those things that, that others look at. But, but from a prosecutor, the way I looked at a case was corroboration. And to me, and I've taught this over and over again, but a confession is absolutely worthless unless you can corroborate it. I'll say it again. A confession is absolutely worthless unless it can be corroborated. And if you look at the Brendan Dassey case, there is zero corroboration to back up that very, very weak confession he gave. The evidence that would have been left at that scene could not have been cleaned up by the, the sharpest individual, let alone Avery and Dassey. There is no way they could have cleaned up all that blood. There is no way that there wouldn't have been marks left from shackles on the bed and, and everything else. There's no way that, that that young woman's hair wouldn't have been found in that trailer or semen on the sheets or the bedding. Not a chance that, that those things wouldn't have been found. And the fact that there is zero physical evidence to corroborate a very, very weak and ridiculous uh, confession taken by that young man should be enough for the Wisconsin prosecutors and the Wisconsin police to walk away from that case. Indeed. Where is the evidence? Where is it? Where did this crime scene, where did it go? Yeah. Uh, I got to agree with Robert Milan there, and now we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> fair of the courtroom versus the fair of the program? That's right. All right, I'll try to run with that. I'll, uh, Theater. I don't know if I'm going to answer this exactly, but I'll just... A little, out of your wheelhouse, a little bit, but that's all right. I, I looked at this, I, like the dean, I did a crash course on making a murder this week. I watched all ten episodes in three separate days, and I found myself screaming at the television and, and, <laughs> and screaming at, mis, at Mr. Kratz, like the rest of you. And, and as I broke this thing down, this is how I looked at it. It's... Uh, it started out with the conflict of interest. I mean, how did this whole thing start going south? That they were wise enough to call in a special prosecutor, a moronic special prosecutor, but they, <laughs> they, they brought in a special prosecutor, but they weren't wise enough to keep the original cops out of this. Um, and that's shocking. So that's how this whole thing starts going sideways. Followed by Kratz's press conference regarding Mr. Dassey's confession, which was outrageous followed by the fact that Kratz commits a huge discovery violation by questioning Bobby Dassey during the trial about a, a statement that the defense attorneys never heard about before, um, followed by the defense attorney for Brendan Kaczynski absolutely selling him out with the investigator, following, followed by a series of rulings by the judge that were outrageous. One, no gag order. I mean, why prosecutors and defense attorneys are stepping up to cameras after every day of trial is beyond me. Um, and then followed by what I already mentioned, which was zero corroboration to substantiate the confession. This was more than a... All right, so there we go. We have the, uh, we have the thoughts of Robert Milan on this whole thing. And, and like I said, man, the guy's like a breath of fresh air when you, when you think about dealing with the, the likes of Ken Kratz and, and, and Brad Schimmel. Yeah. Not very, not very good guys. And, you know, Robert Milan, I think, is just a total class act. You know, he, um, the way he talks about uh, the, the wrongfulness of putting an innocent person behind bars, wrongfully, and, and how the, and how the, the prosecution should be the, the loudest one getting proactive about correcting such misfortunes classy guy man he's a very classy guy i like him a lot 
such the opposite of the way that Ken Kratz and Brad Schimmel operate. You know, the definition of Kratzy is is for a reason because you know the dude is just delusional. You know, uh, and I honestly don't see where his Brad Schimmel is really going to be much different. I think they're just peas in a pod. So. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just suggest to everybody, please watch the entirety of this uh, video that I'm sharing pieces of it with you here. Um, I really wanted to share some of the pieces of Robert Milan so that you guys could be introduced to him and what he's all about and what the difference between a very conscientious and ethical prosecutor looks like compared to the likes of the prosecutors that you're seeing with making a murder. So, um, I just want to share that with you guys. Also, the video features Steve Drizzen and Laura Nyrider very much. Um, obviously, those are Brendan's lawyers. So, if you have an interest in seeing the type of things they have to say, please tune in for it. Check it out. Um, I'm going to obviously leave the link down in the information down below there. So, just go ahead and go down there and you can click. And now, i got to say, it is a long video. So, maybe you'll pace yourself. Watch it in segments or something. Um, you know, but... I, I love to just sit down and watch it all the way through on Sunday morning or something like that. Personally, that's just me. Uh, I just like to watch it all the way through and just get all that information all at once. But, hey, I just if however you guys choose to, to check it out and, and, and get some information from it, you go. That's basically how I feel about it. But but go ahead and check it out if you get a chance. It's, it's really good. And, you know, I will continue to do more and more uh, videos basically criticizing Brad Schimmel, Ken Kratz, investigation there, in this case, all of it. You can expect more from me. <laughs> so, anyways, we'll see you guys later. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and thank you very much.